Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello everybody. This is Mr. Hamada on behalf of Arwad International Schools and the English Department. I'd like to welcome you all to this lesson. Lesson one. You know that nouns are naming words. A noun is a part of a speech that names a person, place, thing, idea, or animal. Nouns can be used in many different ways in a sentence, such as a sentence, such as a subject, predicate, noun, or an object. For example here, nouns can be names of people, like these ones, Queen Elizabeth, Doctor, and so on. They can be names of places, names of things, or names of ideas. You can classify nouns in several ways. For instance, all nouns are either common or proper, concrete, abstract, singular or plural, and so on. Okay, well, what's the difference between common and proper nouns? Very simple. Common nouns are um, not specific, like author. But if you speci specify which author, Jack London, that is proper. River is a common noun, but River Nile or Nile River, it's a proper noun. Country is common. Ethiopia is proper. A restaurant is common. The name of the restaurant, the specific name of the restaurant, that is proper. Now, let's di differentiate between concrete nouns and abstract nouns. Na uh, concrete nouns, they name things that you can see, hear, smell, or taste, or touch. That means you can feel them with your senses. Abstract nouns, they name ideas in your head, feelings, that nobody can touch, qualities or characteristics. Examples of concrete nouns are like whistle, because you can hear it, pizza, you can eat it and taste it, Saturn, and names of people, Mr. Mr. Murawski. Abstract nouns like beauty, slam, judgment, romanticism. Other types of nouns can be singular or plural. Singular nouns, they refer to one person or one place, one thing, one idea. But nouns that refer to more than one, we call them plural. For example, picture is one, singular. Pictures is plural. Dress is a singular noun. Dresses are plural nouns. Most nouns can be made plural by adding S or ES to the end of the words. And make sure that you are able to read the notes on the margin here. Let's start the exercises in the next page. That is page 172. Identifying nouns. I identify the underlying nouns in the passage here below as either common or proper, singular or plural. For example, New York. Is it common or proper? Think. Exactly. It's proper because it's capitalized. Is it singular or plural? Excellent. It's singular because it refers to one refers to one place. June is ka is proper. June is proper, and it's singular as well. Continue on your own. Okay. Next exercise you need to. Uh, it's about using nouns on a separate sheet here of paper. Write sentences using the types of nouns listed below. Underline them, and in order to help you, you can look around your classroom or your room at home to find to help you find ideas one singular and one plural noun so look around your room now find something singular and something plural one singular like Annie has five pencils that's plural so Annie is singular noun pencils is plural noun now think of two singular uh, two singular proper nouns two singular and proper nouns Okay, stop the video, think to yourself before you see the answers. Here they are. These are example answers. Now let's move to the next lesson. That's page 173. Compound and collective nouns. Compound nouns consist of two or more words used together as a singular noun. A compound noun can be written as one word, or separate words, or can be also hyphenated, like here. Airport is a compound noun, noun because it consists of air and port, two nouns, with no space in between. So that's why we consider this compound noun one word. Post office. Post is a noun. Office is a noun. There is a space. So 
That's a compound noun written as separate words. Self-respect. Self is a noun, respect is a noun, and there is a hyphen here, so this is a compound noun that is considered the hyphenated words. I can hear you. You asking yourself, how do I know whether this compound noun should be singular, hyphenated, or separate words? The answer simply is you need to consult a dictionary. If you are uncertain about how to write a compound noun, look, up, look it up in a print or online dictionary. To form the plural of a, sing, of a single word, compound noun, add s or es to the most words. For example, headache becomes headaches, eyelash becomes eyelashes, wristwatch becomes wristwatches. For compound nouns that are made up of two or more words or are hyphenated, you make the main noun plural. So you add it to the s in sisters. So instead of saying sister-in-law, you say sisters-in-law. Wind chimes public address system. So you add the plural um, suffix to the main word. Some examples of collective nouns are army, faculty, audience, family, and so on. So based on these examples, what do you think are collective nouns? Collective nouns, they name a group or collection of people or animals or things. Collective nouns can be singular or plural. It's a singular verb. When you think the collective noun act as one unit, they act together. For example, the chorus sings at its spring festival. In this sentence here, the chorus is a collective noun. They act together as one person. So we, so that's why it takes a singular verb, sings. But if I say the chorus sing, I have to use a hint in the sentence that they are not acting as one. For example, I can say the chorus sing at their there, not its spring festival. Use a plural verb when you think of this of the uh, separate individuals in the group. For example, here, after the program, the chorus go, we didn't say goes, go is a plural verb. That means the compound, the collective noun here is plural. And the hint to that is the word there because it refers to more than one. So their separate ways means everyone had his own way. The members of the course go different ways. Exercises. Identifying nouns. Underline all of the compound nouns and circle the three collective nouns in the passage below. So we've got here in this passage three collective nouns and some other compound nouns. On your own, start finding the answers. Stop the video. Okay, let me show the answers to you. Okay, guys, so here's the answer to this page. Check your answers and put a mark out of, I think that is around 11. Next exercise, forming plurals. Use the plural form of each compound noun in a sentence here. Great grandmother. The plural form will be great grandmothers with an S added to the mothers, because that's the main word. Do the same thing. Change these compound nouns into plural. Okay. Now let's go to the last lesson in this week's uh, agenda. It's seven point 7.6, that is page 181. 181. Page 181, possessive nouns and pronouns. A possessive noun shows who or what owns or has something. Use the following rules to form possessive nouns. That's the rule. And here's the example. For example, father's pants. Father is singular, so you put apostrophe S. And the pants belong to the father. So, because 
because the noun belongs to a singular noun, so put apostrophe s. Kylie's shoes, great aunt's ring. But what if the noun is plural like here, girls? Girls' jackets. Many jackets belong to many girls. So that's plural. The first noun here is plural, and that's why. And that noun ends with an S, so you need to put the apostrophe after the S. John's budget. Apostrophe. S, then apostrophe. So I put S, then apostrophe. Baby's blanks. S, then apostrophe. What if the uh, noun doesn't end with an S? It's plural, but doesn't end with an S, like women. Woman is one, women is more than one. Women is more than one, but it doesn't have an S. So we will consider it like the first rule, apostrophe, then S. Child is one, children is more than one. Children's clothing, apostrophe S. People's choice, apostrophe S. Use possessive nouns. Using possessive nouns can make your writing less worthy, means shorter and precise. Possessive nouns. Now let's move into possessive pronouns. They show ownership. Sometimes you may use the possessive pronoun before a noun, like here. This is my outfit. My is a possessive pronoun that describes the outfit. But here is your shirt. Also, your is a possessive pronoun. Words like my and mine and your and yours and her and hers and his and its and our and ours and your and yours and their and theirs. All of these are possessive pronouns. Some are singular, some are plural. Certain possessive pronouns may also be used by themselves, like here. Which cab is his? So the word here the word his here doesn't require a noun after it. Yours is over there. It means your jacket is over there, for example, or your cap. So yours, so some possessive, possessive nouns, they need an, uh, a noun after them, and some others they don't need. If they need a noun, we call them possessive adjectives. Possessive adjectives. Unlike possessive nouns, possessive pronouns, they never include apostrophes. Never have an apostrophe. Don't confuse possessive pronouns with contractions. Like here, it's sad that you're going home. It's means it is sad that you're, that you are going home. That's here not possessive, possessive at all. That's contraction for it is and you are. Your suitcase is missing one of its handles. It's here is possessive because it uh, refers to the suitcase. Now, let's start the exercises. On your own, start completing these sentences. Underline the correct possessive form in the sentence. Number one. Haiti's S apostrophe or Haiti apostrophe S. Capital is port or prince. So ask yourself, is the main noun singular or plural? Yes, definitely it's singular because Haiti is the name of a place. Singular place. So it must be apostrophe, then S, or S, then apostrophe. If you're not sure, go back to the video, or replay the video, or have a look at the previous page. The answer is this one. Stop the video, do this exercise before you continue. Okay. Okay, guys, here's the answer. Check your answers and put a mark out of 10. Put a mark out of 10. Now, the next exercise, proofreading a paragraph. As you read the passage below, find the correct five errors in the possessive noun and pronoun. There are five mistakes in this paragraph. Stop the video. Start it. Now, that's the answer. Check your marks, put a mark out of five. And here we come to the end of today's lesson. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me via Schoology or WhatsApp. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.